I had this 3D printer for a while now and I'm really happy with how it prints but sometimes I have a little trouble with bed adhesion. So I read about people building enclosures over, over their printers and it seems like a really good idea. So I put a box over my 3D printer and it really helps keeping the heat inside. So today I want to upgrade that and build a brand new enclosure for my 3D printer. Now, on the spare time show. I'm going to try something new here. I filmed the whole build, but honestly there's not much interesting going on. It's just a big box. So I thought I'd keep it fun and explain what I'm doing while I'm building the enclosure. So just sit back, relax and go watch another video. No, just, just kidding, keep, keep watching this one. I started off with some boards of 8mm thick MDF and cut them to size according to my printer. To connect the panels I reinforced the edges with some basic wooden slats. This makes for a strong joint with the MDF boards. It's just a matter of measuring the boards and cutting the timber to size over and over again. I've got a Creality CR10 and that's a rather large printer. So the enclosure is quite big as well. To make sure the printer would fit in the box, I left about 10 cm of extra space on each side. Now I know what you might be thinking, why didn't he use any glue? Well, the answer is simple, it's just that I don't know if this is going to fit over my 3D printer. And if I have to take it apart, I still can. So I want the base of my enclosure to be really sturdy. So I'm not going to use any of this 8mm thick uh, material. Instead I'm going to use this piece that I have left, but I still have to cut it to size. So that's what I'm going to do now. For the doors, I wanted them to swing open as far as possible. This will make it easier to reach all the way to the back of the printer when needed. The construction is basically the same as the rest of the enclosure. Cutting pieces of MDF to size, reinforcing the edges and screwing it together to make a corner. The trickiest part will be making the door front, because I want to make a little window inside so I can see what my printer is doing. Therefore I need to cut out a recess and... I don't really have the tools to do so, so I won't make the front side out of 8mm thick uh, MDF. I'm going to use two pieces of four. I will cut out the window in the front piece and use another piece in the back to make the whole thing sturdy enough. I still got this piece of plexiglass left over, so I'm going to cut it in two halves and use one on each door. For the front face of the door, I laminated two pieces together, leaving a recess for the plexiglass. This will then sit flush with the surface. I will now screw the front side of the door to the corners I just made. And then the whole piece will make one big door, like this. To make sure the door front is extra sturdy, I added some wooden slats all along the edges as well. To attach the doors I'm going to use these piano hinges. I will now screw in the bottom piece, then sand down the edges, use some filler where needed and just prep for paint. I am using two coats of white MDF primer, applying it with a brush in the details and with a paint roller on the outside surfaces. I'm not painting the entire inside of the box, as most of it will be covered up in foam later on. Here I'm cutting a hole for the cables from the printer. After the paint has had enough time to fully dry, it's time to reassemble all the parts. 
this means removing the protective foil from the plexiglass and permanently screwing in the hinges. If you're wondering why I didn't paint the inside of the box, it's because I didn't have enough paint. And also I'm going to fill the whole thing with these sound insulation panels. These will not only help the printer be a lot quieter, but it will hopefully also keep the heat inside. Pro tip! Cutting foam is super easy with a bread cutter. Just make sure you clean it off before putting it back in the kitchen drawers. To attach the foam panels, I'm using regular old staples. As a useful detail, I'm making a spool holder from a wooden dowel and an old 3D printed spool holder that broke a while back. Pro tip 2! Never throw away anything that's broken! Now I just need to drill a hole in the frame to attach the spool holder. Pro tip 3. Cutting holes with drill bits in foam doesn't work, so use something hot. To line the inside of the bottom of the enclosure I'm using this reflective foil that's used to insulate radiators. It's supposed to reflect the heat coming from the print bed back up into the box. To prevent as much heat loss as possible, I'm also putting in some insulation straps on all the openings. Finally, I can screw in some door handles to the reinforced edges, add some magnets to keep the door shut and a lock to keep everything in place. And there you have it, a really fancy enclosure for a 3D printer. Just between us, a cardboard box would probably work just as well, but that doesn't look quite as cool. Now it might not look like much from far away until you turn on the LEDs. Ooh, yeah. And of course I put in some LEDs. On the inside I put a thermometer slash clock slash humidity meter to keep an eye on all the different specs inside the enclosure. Overall I'm quite happy with how things turned out. The enclosure keeps the heat really well and more importantly it keeps it consistent. As for noise cancelling it works fine but you can still hear some of the high pitched noises but nothing too annoying really. So that's it, my version of the 3D printer enclosure. Thanks for watching and see you around.